Hello, I'm Alison Milton. Today we're going to talk about medieval leatherwork. There's a lot of medieval leatherwork has been found in archaeological deposits in Hull and Beverly. It's now kept in the Hull and East Riding Museum. It's a very good online collection. If you want to browse it, there's some very good high-res pictures that you can look at. Leather's a useful material. It's strong, it's supple, it's hard-wearing, and it's quite easy to get hold of because it's a byproduct of the food industry. It can be used to make a multitude of things. We can make shoes. Um, these here are based on medieval designs. They're called turn shoes because they're sewn inside out, which is why you can't see the stitching. And then they're turned the right way out for wear. Leather's also used for making horse harness. I don't have a handy horse here to show you, so you'll just have to take my word for it, but horse harness was also very often made of leather. Leather's also used to make cases. Um, you can make a, a fairly solid rectangular case. You can make a round case. Or a long case like this one. You can also make much smaller cases. Um, like this one is, is used for my um, punches, and I've got one in here which I use for needles. Another thing leather's used for is knife sheaths. Uh, I've got here a kitchen knife in a sheath. I've got my leather knives which are in sheaths, I'll tell you about them later. And here I've got a copy of a knife sheath which was found in Hull on Blackfriar Gate in about 1976 in the garden of what used to be the Augustinian Priory, hence Black Friars, because they wore black habits. So we'll be looking at knife sheaths in a little bit more detail in a bit. I said earlier that we were going to talk about the tools that I use to make leather work. I'm going to start by talking about knives. I'm going to start with this one, which we call a round knife. And it's fairly obvious why it's called that because it's it's round. It's a very versatile knife. It can be used for cutting straight lines and also for cutting curves. It's well to be wary when you're cutting with this knife because it can be quite dangerous uh, because you can cut yourself um, without expecting to because it's sharp all the way around. It's very good for cutting straight lines because you can lean it over and cut a long ascribed line like that. So that's one type of uh, leather knife. It, a very similar knife is called a head knife. You see these in medieval illustrations. Quite often they're stuck down into the board in front of the worker. I don't like to do that. It damages the awl. Um, I keep mine in a purpose-made sheath. So similar blade, uh, sharp, again sharp all the way around. Be careful how you use it. You always, always, always keep your hand behind the blade when you're cutting. So you don't put your hand here. You never put your hand there. If I want to cut here, I have my hand behind it. And I cut. It's also got what's called an awl, which is a sharp point for making holes. So I can make holes into the leather. This one is going from the surface you see out through the edge of the leather. Or I could go down through the leather. There's two reasons. The next tool I want to talk to you about is what's called an awl. Now we saw an awl on the head knife, the sharp pointy bit at the end. This here is a separate awl. It's more convenient because there's no danger of cutting yourself with the sharp blade flirting around while you're trying to use the awl. And again, I can make holes um, in the leather either obliquely like we did before to go um, from the face to the edge or straight through. I could do that through two layers and then I could sew them together. So we're going to talk about the sheaths found in Hull on Blackfriar Gate in the Augustinian Priory Garden. I don't know whether you can see it. It's got a design of a, a strange creature that's got the head of a man but with the beak of a bird and a kind of strange winged body. It's known as the birdman sheath. I thought it'd be nice to make a knife sheath. 
So I've got here one that we cut out earlier. I'm just going to dampen it slightly, just with a damp cloth, just to make it easier to work with and so that it will take a pattern when we come to decorate it. Now, when it's finished, the, the seam at the back will be offset. So the pattern needs to be offset on the, um, on the sheath when we decorate it. So I've got here uh, what's called a crease, which is a tool for making lines and a straight edge. And we're just going to mark out where we're going to put the pattern. It forms part of the pattern. And then this line has to follow the curve of the sheath and then go all the way to the top. So now I know I'm going to put my pattern in this area here. I'm going to have some more lines which follow the edge of the knife. And then we might have some chevrons on the back. I quite like chevrons. They're a nice, simple, easy to do design. Quite often the, the decoration on medieval knife sheaths is quite crude. Um, quite often they seem to have been decorated by the owner rather than by a professional. Sometimes it's not crude at all. Sometimes it's very, very beautiful, like the Birdman sheath. But other times you think they probably bought a plain sheath and they may have decorated it themselves. So there we are. And then we can put a pattern of stamps um, on the middle. And I think we'll use the um, our old favourite the uh, diamond with dots. We're doing an all over pattern, but with a gap between them. Just check I haven't missed any. And there we go. Now the next thing to do is we need the holes up the edge. So for that I'll need my awl and I'll need to mark out the spaces for the holes. So reach into my box and find my stitch gauge. And then I'll mark all these out and I'll mark all these and make the holes all the way around the edge. The holes, again, they go from the surface of the leather out through the edge like this. So I'll mark all those out and then we'll talk about how to sew it. So having made all the holes around the edge, as you can see, we now need to sew it. I've got here a piece of thread, which I've cut. Just needs to be waxed. You take a piece of beeswax. This is just actually a candle end. Uh, and you run the thread across it a couple of times in each direction so that you cover the whole thread in a nice layer of wax. Then that means it won't fray and it will also go through the, the leather better. Now, I'm actually cheating. I'm going to be using um, steel needles. What they would have done is to use boar's bristle um, to mount their thread onto. Unfortunately, I don't have any handy boars, so I'm going to have to cheat and use modern needles. So you mount a needle on either end of the thread. So I thread the needle 
and pass the thread, pass the needle through the thread, down onto the thread and then tighten it up so that it's not going to come off every time I sew. And then I do the same on the other end. So There we are. So I thread it and I pass the needle through the thread and then down the needle and onto the thing. So it's, it's looped on, as you can see. So that means that I can start sewing the sheath. A little bit damper, just so it folds nicely. And then, as you see, the needle goes through from the grain of the leather out through the edge. And then it'll go through through the other hole and come back out of the grain. So the needle doesn't go into the inside of the sheath at all. I just need to level them up without tearing the leather. It's quite fragile at this stage. And then we start making the next stitch. Once you've got the first, the first couple of stitches done, um, the, the work holds together better and it's easier to do. It's always, it's like everything. It's the, the first bit is always fiddly. So then I can pull this tight. And as you can see, it goes together butt to butt, butted up nicely. And the threads are not quite level. I can sort that out. Or maybe not. And then what I need to do is hold the work. Because as you can see, I need both hands for sewing. What I do for that is, this, you might have thought this line on the bench was a belt, but it's not. It's actually for holding my work and it needs to go around my foot. So if you'll just bear with me, I'll come back to you in a moment when I've moved the camera so you can see what I'm doing. So I've now got my uh, strap set up so you can see how I hold the work. Um, I've got this strap, which, as I said, looks like a belt. It's just the right length and it goes over my knee and under the arch of my foot so that as I tighten my leg it holds the work. So now I've got both hands free to hold the work. So This stitch is very strong because it uses both ends of the same piece of thread. So even if one bit frays, the other thread, the other half of the thread, will still keep the work together. And so then I just work down the sheath like this. All the way till I reach the bottom. So I've whizzed all the way down. I've done the curvy bit at the end and all I need to do now is flatten it out, fasten the threads off and we have a rather handsome knife sheath. So there you go, that's how to make a knife sheath. I hope you've enjoyed this talk about medieval leather work. Maybe it's inspired you to go and have a look at the collection 
online at Harlan East Riding Museum's website. Or, when we can visit museums again, go and have a look at the collection yourself.